Good morning, everybody. Uh, whenever I will lower my voice or do something like that, raise your hand and wave at me um, so that everybody can listen. So today I'm not going to give a technical talk. I'm just going to give a bit more of a talk like why are we doing this the way we're doing it, especially as we would have this discussion with some of our funders. So my name is Jeroen Bommer. I work in the Swissbook group at SIB in Switzerland mostly on Uniprod, but many more projects these days. The SIB is the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics and has five pillars. But mostly these are separated into infrastructure and community. And these are going hand in hand. Because we build the infrastructure for the community, and if there's no community, then we don't have any infrastructure because the funders will say, you have no community, why should we fund you? And whenever we talk to funders, we basically want to know one thing. Are we providing value for money? When we provide this infrastructure, are we wasting it or are we being efficient? Do we provide the value for the community? And for our community it is, can they collaborate? Can they use this infrastructure? Can they reuse it? And that's not so simple in a world where it's not one institute we're talking with, but many different ones. Because Switzerland is a federation of states, and each one of them has their own universities, their own research groups, and you can't tell them what to do. You can't enforce standards. They will always say, well, we do it slightly different here. This is a country which cannot standardize on its language, right? There's four national languages. If they cannot agree on that point, let's not get down lower levels. But what are very good in is connecting everything. They're very good at making sure that you can go from one side of the country to the other country, on time, on schedule, without delays. And this we have to do it for our data as well, and for all our programs as well. And these days, Switzerland is not the world. We are part of Elixir, part of Europe. So even there we go, like, how can you get all of these people to agree on anything? Well, you can't. You have to show that you can agree on the small things, not on everything. So for these reasons, we've been doing RDF and Sparkle. Because if you move towards the world, the complications only get bigger. You still need to connect people, but the chances that you can enforce any kind of standards become less and less. On the same time, on the category of being efficient, we know that you can't store all the things. Data like Inuprot is growing. And you might say, well, Inuprot is not that big. You know, 60 billion triples or two terabytes of data. It doesn't sound big. But if you imagine that we have a thousand users and to store this kind of data, you need a server which is about 30,000 euros. A thousand times 30,000, you're already talking about significant amounts of money, millions of euros saved for the community. At the same time, you have so many more databases. You can't just say, well, any part of one database and it can do everything. That's just not possible. You have to deal with the fact that there are other interests. You can be widely outside of the biochemical domain on the day-to-day -day level. If you want to talk about patents, you need the European Patent Office. They have a very nice Sparkle and RDF database. We, as Uniprod, will never consume all the data about patents into our database. But it's very interesting that we can query these two at the same time. The same thing goes for chemistry. Uniprod is proteins. We can do all the chemistry. We can do a bit of it with our collaborations with Gruyere, which should be reactions. But if you want to move beyond that view of the protein sided world, you have to go to another database, a different country, a different state. And they will do their things their own way. They have their own data that doesn't fit into a protein record. So what kind of technology allows this? Well, only Sparkle and RDF, and none of the other ones have done anything like this. So we look at what kind of potential does a technology have? And if you compare it to like, what else could we have done? Then RDF and Sparkle have a few potentials that none of the other alternatives have. You might be talking about RESTful services, JSON-orientated data, 
but you don't have the same potential. You have a limitation to the fact that whenever you hit a boundary from organizational levels or data science levels or the areas where you say, okay, we're no longer talking about biology, but about chemistry or physics or legal, and every time you hit one of these boundaries, then the rest of the full approach breaks down because you don't have any ways to link these disparate systems. And for us, it's becoming very important to not just talk about biology, but we actually need to integrate with the Swiss Federal Information Infrastructure. And this actually, strangely enough, comes back into biology. So for us, we might be talking about where is something in Switzerland? So you have the Swiss Topographical <coughs> Office, they provide their data in Sparkle and RDF. You actually can go to a website and you can actually ask Sparkle queries about where are things in Switzerland. And this again then becomes important if you start sampling biological samples, where you basically want to say, where did I capture this butterfly? And then you want to describe the genome of this butterfly. And you want to query these weird things together, you can do it with Sparkle. It's impossible to do with anything else. Again, if you go to the legal side, you go to the European Patent Office, you have a Sparkle endpoint. We talk about data which comes from patents. So if you want to do a query which is like, for every record annotated in any product, could I please have the entries which were annotated with patents that expired yesterday? Sparkle allows you to do that. None of the other ones do. At the same time, we have to integrate with the open site data community. Again, Sparkle with Wikidata and DBpedia is the only option for that field. There are no alternatives there. There is no popular technology in the field which even comes close to providing these technologies. So this means that to be able to afford people to actually work with our data so that our communities can actually do the things that they need, the Sparkle and RDF has been the only options. And you see this even internally inside our organization. We currently have eight public Sparkle endpoints, and there's going to be a few more coming up. And you might say, oh, that's just in one organization that is being standardized top up. No, this is bottom up. Oh, my browser, I did not know that you were doing a Sparkle endpoint until I saw it here a few years ago. Or to the B, similar. BG, similar. Because the SFB is a federated institute. So if a group leader doesn't believe that the standard is good, he wouldn't use it. MetaNet X has it one available since this week as well. And this again comes to this idea of supporting our community of infrastructure with infrastructure. Each of these little pieces of infrastructures actually are a community by itself. So we have a community of users and community of providers that are slowly standardizing on support and RDF because it enables us to communicate without having a central data warehouse. Because Switzerland really does not like central infrastructure. That is basically an unfundable ID. It does not work in this country. Yet everything must be separated in different areas. And if you talk about that on the international level, it's even more true. Well, some people might say it's a great idea, we should just defund NCBI and move all that money into EBI. It doesn't work that way. We have to realize that we will have different infrastructure across different countries. Sometimes it's also good to look back at the past and say, well, what other popular things could we have spent our money on? Well, in the 2000s, we definitely got a lot of hits and said, why aren't you doing grid computing? Anybody still doing grid computing? Should we be doing SOAP? Should we do invest more money in SOAP technology? That doesn't people uh, that doesn't get our funders happy anymore. In 2008, we were told to do business process modeling. That doesn't get us funding anymore either. In 2011, we were supposed to do Hadoop. Does that make people happy? Not anymore. <laughs> because we should be using Snakemake now, or common workflow languages. And all of these things would have been as expensive to do as what we have done for the RDF and Sparkle. But the RDF and Sparkle 
at no point had big push from industry and said, like, we should be doing it that way. So, having that as a reflection, I think we've done the right thing and enabled the community with our as well. So, thank you for your time, and I'm happy to get questions. Thank you.